In 1898, the church permitted examination of the cloth by the impersonal eye of a rather new invention, the camera. No one could have expected that the photograph Segundo Pia took that day would change forever the way people saw the shroud. For as the photographer's glass plate emerged from the developing solution, he saw a face, a distinct clear face, unlike anything ever seen before on the shroud. He understood at once that the shadowy image on the cloth had been a negative, and that he was now looking at a positive. He held in his hands an image that would launch a century of scientific investigation. It was only in 1898 that the world finally became aware of the incredible image on the shroud. Italian Seconda Pier took the first photograph. When it was published, the shroud became world famous. When Secundo Pia makes this photograph, he almost dropped the plate. It scared him because he said, my God, I was looking into the face of the Lord. That's when he realized that the image on the cloth is a negative. The lights and darks are reversed from what we're used to seeing. For the first time, people could clearly see the body on the shroud as a positive image. The photograph displayed details that were invisible to the naked eye. It triggered an uproar. He's immediately accused of fraud, immediately accused of cheating, lying, and manipulating this. It's a fake. And it wasn't until 1931 when Giuseppe Henriet is allowed to photograph the shroud for the second time gets the same results, of course. The world of science suddenly looks at the shroud and says, well, wait a minute, maybe we should look at this closer. Scientists couldn't get access to the sacred relic, but the photographs were now in the public domain. And as the 20th century progressed, new technology was set to reveal even more detailed images of the face in astonishing 3D. By the 1970s, the Turin Shroud was world famous. Many believed it was the burial shroud of Jesus, and yet scientists hadn't been able to examine it. But advances in photographic analysis were starting to uncover incredible clues hidden in the image itself. One breakthrough was made using a remarkable new imaging device. The VP8 was originally designed to analyze aerial photographs. It converts the light and dark on a traditional two-dimensional image to create a brightness map displayed on a 3D grid. Scientists wondered if it could be used to shed new light on the shroud. Engineer Peter Schumacher helped develop the VP8. Nobody in our company had ever even heard of the Shroud of Turin, let alone seen pictures or wanted to look at image analysis of the Shroud of Turin. When Schumacher placed an ordinary photograph under the machine, it displayed levels of brightness, but revealed no 3D data. If we look, cheeks really aren't that flat. His eyebrows are not really grooved into his forehead. His nose really doesn't smear all over his face. This is how every photo appeared. The machine couldn't decipher real height and depth to display a true 3D image. But when an image of the shroud was placed under the device, something remarkable happened. All of a sudden, we're seeing contrast that has something to do with height and depth, real distance. The nose has a prominence. The cheeks roll off. The hair has a, a shape to it and is rounded. The uh, whole image has dimension to it. 
the results suggested that the shroud image could have been created by a real human body. The shroud is a very unique image, the only one of its kind in the whole world. Nothing else like it. Three-dimensional relief, the front and the back of a whole human being. Only one in the world. No other, no where, no how, no way. I don't know any way to make it. I've never heard of a way to make it. Just the Shroud of Turin. The stains on the cloth are remarkably subtle and complex. One fiber will be discolored, while an adjacent one is not. Yet each fiber is only one-tenth the diameter of a human hair. And in some places, the image only penetrates to one five-hundredth of an inch. There is no known way of replicating such markings on a cloth. Most experts are now convinced that the image was not painted. In the search to understand how it was created, scientists placed it under a machine called the VP-8 Image Analyzer, a unique device used by NASA to interpret photographs from space. If we place a perfectly normal young man's picture under the VP-8... Any two-dimensional image, such as a photograph or a painting, will not be read properly. The shape of the original object will appear distorted. The hair, which we know to be over the brow, is actually sunken because it's darker. Whereas the face, the cheeks, are actually elevated because they're lighter. A photograph of the shroud should be distorted as well. But it isn't. When this image was seen for the first time, scientists were amazed. It was perhaps as dramatic a moment as when Segundo Pia saw the negative image of the shroud for the first time. We notice that the nose is above the cheeks and that the face is of the proper dimension, the beard and the hair. The VP-8 analysis was a breakthrough, establishing that the image was formed while the cloth was draped over a three-dimensional object. In the remote mountains of Panama, one shroud believer's obsession was about to spark renewed interest in the shroud. Peter Soomes is a retired doctor and a 3D imaging expert who now works as an artist. The Shroud of Turin is one huge message, a gift of God to the world. While researching a sculpture, Dr. Soomes came across an image of the shroud and it changed his life. I have the feeling that that image touches the soul of people. Using his medical skills, he started a remarkable project that would bring the still image to life. I got an uh, obsessive thought in my head, because I didn't know about radiocarbon dating, I didn't know nothing. The only thing that was clear in my head was, this is the authentic burial cloth of Jesus Christ. With the help of experts in Holland and Argentina, Dr. Soons embarked on a complex process that would transform the face on the shroud into a 3D holograph. I got the idea that there was holographic information in the Shroud of Turin. The image was divided into lots of slices. Then we put these pieces all together until it formed a 3D. So what we have in the computer now is the face of Jesus Christ in three dimensions. After three years of painstaking work and computer processing, the 3D image of the body was complete. According to Dr. Soons, this is the actual face of the historical Jesus, captured just moments after death, when he was wrapped in the shroud. When I saw the results the first time, it really touched me emotionally very much people start crying uh, spontaneously when they stand in front of uh, these images. And I've seen people, people change their life completely. It changed my life. 
publication of the image ignited fresh interest in the shroud. So the Aramaic word Ayin Alaf Nun means the lamp. Now, here we have the Shroud of Turin with the image of a crucified man who according to tradition was Jesus Christ and under the beard an object upon whose surface is written in Aramaic the word the lamp. But a much more astonishing discovery has been made, that of a solid object, possibly wood, located on the chest of the man. Written on the object is the Hebrew word for lamb. Jesus Christ is otherwise known as the Lamb of God. It means the Lamb of God, it means basically the body of Jesus Christ. So whoever did this, or put it there, knew exactly what he was doing. And it is for me a very great proof of authenticity. These discoveries have been made possible by holographic three-dimensional images of the material. For me, religion and science are two sides of a coin. It's a material world and a spiritual world that are one. So I never do an investigation without thinking about a spiritual aspect. So for me it's a unity. And it didn't surprise me that we found uh, these letters by scientific methods having a very theological meaning, a spiritual meaning. Radiation. If what I am told by physicists is correct, it's a projected image. And in other words, it's almost as though the body were floating in the middle of the cloth and all of the projection comes off at right angles to the body. This image is directly collimated from the body. That is, it's parallel and parallel to gravity. This is so unique that it has to be explained as a radiation phenomena. And as we rotate back Radiation may be the only way to explain recent findings that the image is like an X-ray, revealing internal structures of the body. Uh, we are seeing the, the bones, the metacarpals, uh, here. Even more striking, as we shift up to the wrist area and rotate back and forth, looking here, we can identify the individual wrist bones on the shrouded Turin. We see skeletal features in the depth of the body consistent with some type of X-radiation. And so we feel that the image, other than the direct contact with it from blood and so forth, is basically a, a formed by uh, this a remarkable and uni unique situation of radiation. Scientific team regarding the shroud image. The actual image was created by a phenomenon as yet unknown, or a momentous event that caused a rapid cellulose degradation, aging, of the linen fibers. That is, an accelerated dehydration and oxidation of the very top linen fibrils of the cellulose fibers of the shroud, thereby creating a sepia or straw yellow colored image similar to that of a scorch. In other words, the image was caused by something, nobody knows what, that affected only the very top of the fibrils that make up the fibers that in turn make up the fabric. After thousands of hours of intense study, the world was left with yet another scientific enigma. A piece of fabric that is demonstrably handwoven containing a surface anomaly in the shape and form of a crucified man created by some process of undetermined origin. But how could an image containing so much information have been formed? There are those who believe the image could only have been formed by a burst of some sort of radiation. But the simple fact is, nothing like the shroud image has ever been found or reproduced. But that's only the beginning of the astounding information to be gleaned from this amazing image. In spite of skeptics and setbacks, scientists continue their search. And Dame Isabel Pitsick, a particle physicist, believes the shroud has brought science to the threshold of a whole new understanding of physics. While dealing with the position of the body within the cloth, she discovered one of those mysterious properties that cannot be, yet somehow is. An interface that divides the image transport into two hermetically separate yet simultaneous actions and forces causing the shroud to be taut and parallel on both sides, creating a true event horizon. In general relativity, we have found that there are certain things called black holes. Now, the surface of a black hole is called an event horizon. And it's called that because right at that surface, right at that surface, the laws of physics seem to change character drastically. When you look at the image of the shroud, the two bodies next to each other, 
you feel that it's a flat image. But if you create, for instance, a three-dimensional object as I did, the real body, then you realize that the, there is a strange dividing element, an interface, from which the image is projected up and the image is projected down. The muscles of the body are absolutely not crushed against the, the, the stone of the tomb. They are perfect. It means that the body is hovering between the two sides of the shroud. What does that mean? That there is absolutely no gravity. Other strange things you discover that the, the image is absolutely undistorted. Now, if you imagine that the cloth was wrinkled, tied, wrapped around the body, and all of a sudden you see a perfect image, which is impossible unless the shroud was made absolutely taut, rigidly taut. Everybody thinks that the tomb signifies death. Not at all, the exact opposite. The shroud and the tomb signifies an unbelievable beginning. Because we, in the depth of the collapsed event horizon, there is something which science knows as singularity. This is exactly what started the universe in the Big Bang. We have nothing less in the tomb of Christ than the beginning of a new universe. For centuries, the shroud has been viewed and analyzed as a record of a death, the end of the physical being. But Isabel Pitzig is suggesting that it is, in fact, just the opposite, a record not of an ending, but a beginning, which would suggest resurrection in its truest sense. And according to Dame Pitzig, this is the starting base 